Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Annie Making 3 and today I'm going to be giving you Part 10 of What If Naruto Was A Genius Experimenter Remember to get this one to 100 like as usual Share this to all of your friends in your social media platform And also guys Go ahead and check out the brand new episode of What If Naruto Was A Outcast Uchiha in the Time of the Sonnings and enjoy that guys and also if you're new yes I indeed have three channels and making and making two and making three which I post what if on every single day for you guys to enjoy so go ahead and click that red subscribe button and become a part of the making family and thank you for all for helping your support remember to comment down below and tell me if you're new I'll be replying talking back to all of you so yeah without further ado what do you say we leap right into this new episode let's begin the intro guys So the last spot we left off, we started out with Sasuke Uchiha, who has been hiding something from even Urchimaru. This was not something you want to tell to Urchimaru because you want to use it as a chump card to make sure that Urchimaru die, even if he had him at an advantage. As Sasuke awakened the Mangetsu after killing his best friend who was Naruto, after driving the Shidori through his heart, Sasuke did not even realize until he felt the power coursing through him as he was the only one that was aware of this. As he would just wait for some more, he needed more training from Urchimaru before he can even think of going after Itachi to end his miserable life. While that was going on, Uncle found herself in a situation that she never thought that she was going to be in again. A kuna in her hand as she was right over Naruto as she sat on his waist, as she could kill him right here and now. However, her mind was fighting against her, as she couldn't. As much as she tried to drive it down, she could not. He snapped his eyes open as he planned this. She soon come to realize. As he told her that, he was not going to give up on her as he wanted her on his side. As he told her that he would let this world burn a thousand times over for the few people that he cared for. And she was just like him and he wanted her on his side and nothing would prevent him from getting what he wants. As he would give her time to think this over. But she would have to make her decision very soon otherwise. This is the game between them will come to an end. Now that concerned her and also her mind was conflicted as she spent the rest of the days thinking while that was going on, Naruto brought Yukimaru here after a conversation with Kabuto. That conversation went like this, with Naruto speaking to Kabuto about the Akaste. It was then that Naruto found out about the Renegon, however, he played the fool acting like he didn't know what that dojutsu was, as Kabuto was all likely to tell him whatever he seek about the Akaste. After all, the organization was after him and Orchimaru as well, so the information was gladly needed between them. However, Gorin was more so happy to hear that. Yukimaru was now with her. Unfortunately, Naruto was making his move soon and his move involved Yukimaru's death. So that would be a big turn off in their situation. Although, she would never know that he was behind this. In order to get him on his side, he would do whatever it takes, as he wanted Gurren inside as well. The people around him loyalty that was all he asked for, and that was what he was going to get. Naruto proceeded to go towards his second base which was in the mountains off the regions of Kumo, as he decided to tassle with the orb that the sage used to generate the chakra belonging to the nature energy. However, things went bad as he had to remove his arm. Otherwise being turned into stone, luckily his body defensive cut off the chakra flow, so he would not be solidified into stone. As bad fails and experiments went off multiple times, so this was not surprising especially when he was doing something, like messing with nature energy. However, Nurt decided to work on his other field of work, that was the Sharingan that he got from Danso, and not to mention the DNA of the first Okagi. It turns out that the Senjus and the Uchiyas 
They all came from the sage, so Naruto wondered if he were to bring back them together, what would be the result? So that is what he did as he started to bring them back together, however, he had to be careful. With the limited resource that he had, if he messed up it was done. So with that going on, Naruto came back to the base. As Uncle found herself in a rather beautiful purple dress. As she didn't know what the hell was going on, was this some kind of date? However, as they sat and eat and talk, at the end of the conversation, he asked her to make her a choice. If she would serve him, or she wants to go back home. Now she was shocked hearing that option, as she didn't believe that he would just let her go back home. She could swear that he was going to try and kill her if she chose that option, however. She decided to see how far she could push this. And he brought her towards the edge of the island and allowed a subordinate to carry her on the sea. Uncle was shocked he was actually sending her back home. As for her wildest dreams, so this was something that she could not even imagine. It was all over between them. She was going to go back home. However, the thought of leaving him, the thought of not being by his side to help him and achieve his dreams and achieve hers as well because everything he said about her was correct. It hurt her physically. As she turned and rushed back towards Naruto, she didn't want to leave. However, the ninja on the boat said that he wouldn't turn back but she jumped. Her chakra was now free as she rushed back to him. She jumped, no more like a leap into his arms. As he held on to her, as she told him to never let her go, she didn't want to leave. As she got attached to him and she didn't want to leave him like this, she just didn't want to. As Naruto smiled here and that, knowing that his job was complete, he then proceeded to beat her right in the neck, on the opposite side of where Urchimaru had marked her. The seal that Urchimaru placed on her so long ago had been burned off. As Uncle screamed however she felt, a newfound energy flooding into her cores. Her entire body lightened up with power as it was so overwhelming that she passed out. As Naruto picked her unconscious form up, as her entire body was glowing crimson, as a mark came on her neck, as Naruto smiled, and that was one down. So you yeah, guys, basically that's what I thought of you guys can switch across the place of yourself and also guys, remember to stick around for the rest of what is coming your way. And go ahead and check out the brand new episode of What If Naruto Was an Outcast Uchiha in the time of the Sonians and enjoy that. So without further ado, what do you say we just jump? Now let's leap right into this new episode guys, begin now. There was a smile on her face. As Uncle Mira, she was happy. She felt light, she felt free. She couldn't tell the last time she felt this free. As both her and Naruto stand a few feet away from one another, she had this grin on her face. As her entire body felt so filled and rushed with raw energy, she smirked before she took off. It seems like she just disappeared, as her speed had been greatly enhanced. But not just that. She appeared in front of the blonde, her feet raised high in the air, as she dropped it. He brought his hand up as her feet made contact. The groan underneath him broke. However, his knees did not bend one bit. It just go to show the amount of strength that he possessed. He then grabbed said leg with his other arm. As he tossed her, Uncle flip as her feet touched the wall. The moment it did, she shoot off like a rocket. As she met him head on. A spinning kick she did as he ducked underneath it. Dropping flat down to the ground before he reached up and grabbed the back of her shirt. He then yanked her down however uncle was prepared. As she flipped on her hand, flipping to the side. She went through two hand signs in mid air before she breathed out. A stream of flame that encompassed the entire area. As she watched the flame rushed over everything. When the smoke cleared away there was nothing there. She flashed her own as she had to block the punch. That sent her body sailing away despite her crossing her arms, the punch really stung her arms. She then had to move as Naruto feet made contact with the wall. Spiderweb cracks coming all over said wall. A grin was on her face as she grabbed onto his leg and flipped over. As she wanted to land right on top of his head however, he reached up and grabbed her before he proceeded to slam her into the ground. Cracking it with great force. However, she struck it off like it was nothing. It wasn't her speed that was just enhanced to a ridiculous degree. It was also her durability as well. 
She gripped his arm before yanking him down. However, he used raw, brutal strength and pulled her back up before he threw her. She flipped as she slammed her legs in the wall, stopping no momentum before she flashed you two hand signs. As she then fired out several wind bullets, he dodged as they tore apart the ground. She then flashed away once again as she appeared behind the sunshine as she brought her arm towards his neck as she tapped him on the throat with her two fingers. It's over. He merely chuckled. Is that so? Uncle felt her face in the ground the next second. As it happened so fast. As Naruto was behind her holding out her left hand while his right leg was placing her face down into the ground. The Naruto in front of her simply vanished. His shadow clones barely had smoke. This was an ingenious way of using this technique as no one would even see when they dispel. When the hell did you? He yanked her off the ground. As she was now in front of him with a pout in her face. She knew that he was strong but yet, being treated like a child even after getting this boost in power, although they were not going all out, it still was kind of infuriating. As she wanted to prove that she was strong, a smirk came to her face. You know, she said. I was wondering before she could finish that sentence, as she did it on purpose just to get him off guard as she moved forward. The next thing Naruto knew her arms wrapped around his head as their lips come into contact with one another. The kiss was one of passion as the flame seemed to burn rather brightly. It's been over one and a half months since Anku has completely accepted the role that she was taking now. Upon biting down on her neck, Naruto had transmitted his own mark on her. Said Mark had a spiral like the Uzumaki swirl, but it was all black. There was a tinge of red in the center. The more of the power she used, the more the spiral enrolled upon itself. However, this was not like Urchimar Mark, where he would try to take over her body. This served as a two meaning, as this linker Naruto, both mentally and physically as well. And also, this unlocked the points in her body. Orochimaru's seal prevent her from going all out because the chakra would intertwine with his and cause her to go crazy with that curse mark but Naruto's mark. It not only increased her chakra, it literally quadruplet. It opened every chakra points in her body. Anku never thought that something like this was possible. It was similar to the 8 celestial gates. However, the mark was able to keep her body in check, giving her that boost of stability strength, speed, resilience, and everything else, the enhancement of her jutsus to make her a lot stronger and the more stronger she gets, the more her body was able to take on more of this power. As there was no telling how high she could go, she had to be strong to be by his side. However, since she has done that and fully accepted this role that she was in now, the attraction to him that she felt before had literally quadrupled. It was so strong that she could barely resist it. As she made up her mind and she wanted to be happy, and happy she was going to be but this was the first time that she was doing this. Uncle broke away as she expected some kind of reaction out of him as she waited for one. Despite all their little mind games that they played one another, they've never actually done this before. So she waited for something to happen, only for her to yeep in surprise when his arms wrapped around her and lift her off the ground. The next thing she knew she was slammed in the wall. And... Her lips were taken once again, forcefully this time. However, she could not deny it as she wrapped her arms around him. As there was this wild, animal passion that caused the both of them to rip their clothes off. In this intense session of heat. As he grabbed her and made her face a wall. What happened next was violent, crazy but yet pleasurably insane. While that was going on, Gorin was delivering a report to Lord Urchimaru as she just finished delivering a report to the man regarding Naruto development. She could not keep Yukimaru with her at all times. Urchimaru still wanted the boy to be monitored here and she could not show how much she cared about him. For some reason Naruto words had stuck into her mind that if Urchimaru were to do something to keep her in check to the boy. However lately she couldn't help it. 
she was thinking differently. Her mindset mostly revolved around that damn blonde. Not to mention the strange dream that she's been having. As being in charge here, Gurin had a reputation to uphold. So she wouldn't sully herself with any of the guys here. They were beneath her. Kabuto always tried to make her approach. As it wasn't really flirting but however, the way he acted towards her. It was a show of dominance. The way he got up in her personal space. And recently, since been spending time with Naruto, she started to despise the man. Naruto words of how he would treat Yukimaru if she was not there had been starting to plague in her head. She came to a stop when she saw Sasuke. As he was currently training, several strange kunai launchers were set up. He defected and blocked all of them. She had no idea why they wanted to keep the secret that Naruto was. Still dead, but, well, it wasn't her place to question anything. As she made her way back, Strangely enough, she found herself happy to return back to the island, even though Yukimaru was not there. However, she did love spending time with him, and he seemed rather happy. And she did tell him to tell her if any of those idiotic sound ninjas were messing with him. And if they were, well, they wouldn't like what she would do to them. Some time passed as she got back to the island, and she asked the subordinates, where's Naruto? As one of them handed her a note, Gorin opened said note as she frowned. Naruto had went out for a while, as he did not specify when he would be returning, as she frowned at that. Well, at least she could go for some practice. Hey, where's the little short one, she said. As she realized that she didn't really know their names, well, they didn't seem to have any names. She wasn't even sure what they looked like under those masses, but she wouldn't eat shows. She would just do her job, as dominant as she was. It wasn't her place, she told herself. Meanwhile, that was going on. In the land of Kumo. The land of lightning was a large place where the hidden village Kumo reside in. The village was massive, as there were four massive mountain peaks. The civilians live on the lower edge, as the atmosphere was not so thin down there. However, up where the Shinobis live, where 80% of them reside, the atmosphere was really thin. Having most shinobis have problem going up that far. As Kumo had never been successfully attacked before. Because of the atmosphere. Same for the sand because of the land mass. It was hard for other nations and other shinobis. Who were not used to the climbing to attack them. However the land was currently at peace. The right Kage sat behind his decks rather happily. So far there hasn't been anything to threaten his village. And not to mention while Kumo is busy building their manpower greatly, really really greatly, the other nations were losing theirs. Recently he got some rather secretive information that Konoha lost their Jinjuliki. No one could literally confirm these rumors because no one knew who the Jinjuliki was. Or even if the civilians knew, they seem to be keeping their mouth quiet. But there has been talk going around. But that just means that the two and eight tails, Jinjuliki and his village that had full control over their beasts, just strengthened his village even more. Soon enough, Kumo will reign supreme over all of the other elemental nations. And no one, absolutely no one will be able to stop them. As Raikagi was happy, everything was coming his way up. Everything was looking better for his village. Is nation that will be soon marked as number one. However, unknown to him, problem will soon arise, and it was closer than he think. Meanwhile, at a local sushi bar, sushi was her all-time favorite. It was remarkable, as Yujito, container of the two tails, was a blonde with blue eyes, as her blonde hair was tied with tape at the back. She was wearing beads on her arm, a purple and grey clothing, as she sat. The people in Kumo came to respect their Jinjulkis because they were the defenders of Kumo, as they protected the village and ever kept it safe. Yujito was always happy to indulge herself in these kind of things, as the food was amazing here. As she sat there peacefully, gulging herself on sushi. As she was the only one at the bar, 
The people here knew her quite well. However, she felt someone approach. She steadied her pace. As much as she loved the thing, she didn't want people to think that she was some kind of gluttony. As she ate normally, the person sat down. As he seemed to sigh with happiness, as he looked around, everything here smelled wonderful. As he took one of the menus, the waitress standing there gave him a smile. Why don't you look it over? And I'll be back to take your order. Um, excuse me. He said after giving the waitress a nod. As Yujito realized he was talking to her, she glanced towards him. Yeah, she said. Would you mind enlightening me what is the name of that delicacy that you're eating? This wasn't really a part of the menu. She knew that. It was just because of her long time shopping here. The people came to know what she wanted. Well, as she wondered what she should tell him, without sounding like a gluttony. It isn't really a part of the menu. Oh, I see. How special, he said. Yeah, something like that. He waved over the waitress. Yes, done already, she said. How may I help you? I would like to have what she's having. The waitress looked towards him. Um, well, you see, that's a special meal. Yes, I'll take it, he said. Don't worry, I'll pay whatever it costs. It just smells so delicious. Are you sure, she said. I mean, it is a lot. We call it the Yuji special. Yuji, what's that? Yujito twitched at that as the waitress blushed a bit. As it seems like Yujito didn't want to be known for that despite it being her thing. Oh, it's just a name that we picked out for it. Well, I'll have the Yuji special, he said. Alright, coming right up, sir. You know, you don't have to hide your eating because of me. As Yujito turned towards him. Damn it, he noticed. She paused. When she had first glanced towards him, she hadn't taken a good look at him. But now that she did, she realized how handsome he was. He had dark black hair that reached down to his shoulders. As it was tied back in a small ponytail. He had these remarkable blue eyes. They were just so eye-catching. With this twinkle inside of them. His face was unblemished. Not even a single scar on his face. He looked so handsome and manly. And she couldn't help but blush a bit at his face. Not to mention he had a young, fit, physique body. He looked to be in his, what, early 20 or probably late teens like 19 or 18. But he was really good looking. I don't know what you're talking about she said. As he chuckled to himself. Oh, it's quite alright, he said to her. I mean, I don't judge. Oh, where's my manners? Arashi Oda, he said as he held out his hand. She took her napkin and wiped her right hand. Nice to meet you, Oda-san, she said. Oh, you can just call me Arashi. Alright, here you go, sir. As the meal was placing down in front of him. Wow, this is a lot. As Yujito blushed and embarrassing at that, you know, I really like a girl that can eat. As she raised her eyebrow at that, however, he just simply chowed down. As Yujito watched as he started to scarf everything down, in a rather dignified way. The way he ate, the way he kept himself, the way he sat, it was like he was from some noble side of the family or something. Arashi Oda. Where she heard that name before? The Oda part. As she couldn't remember, however, she did remember someone talking about something like that. Maybe it was when she was with the Raikagi. She was not probably listening well. But she had heard that name before. Hey, she said turning towards him. Oda, your last name. I've heard it before. Well, he said. Not to sound a bit too arrogant, but... My last name do hold some weight, he said. Oh, is that so? Can you elaborate on me exactly? Who you are, she said. Well, you see, before he could say anything though, someone brushed into the stall. Oh, there you are. As a person hooked the armor on his neck, chastised him like he was some kind of child. I'm sorry if he's giving you any trouble. As Yujito looked towards the woman, she had dark hair like him and similar eyes. 
and she looked to be in her late twenties. Oh, it's fine, said Yujito. Hey, come on, he said, I'm just talking. We were supposed to be having a meeting right now with the Raikagi, and you're here talking. Sorry for my little brother here. Sometimes he just lets his stomach rule him. Oh, it's quite fine, said Yujito. Come on, she said as she pulled his ear. Come on, you're embarrassing me. As Yujito found that rather funny. Sorry, I have to go as he was pulled away. Hmm, he's cute. Yeah, he is, said Yujito. Before she blushes, she realized the waitress was staring intently at her, but with a happy smile as well. Forget about that, said Yujito as she got up. Come on, you have a crush. It's not just a bad thing. I don't have a crush. Oh, yes, you do. A voice said within her head. You be quiet as well, she said, to the two-tailed demon cat in her head, as the Nibi simply laughed at her predicament, although she wondered if she would see him again. And she still didn't know. Why did she know that last name of his? Sometime later, the Raikage was in his office until Mabi stepped in along with the brother and sister duo. Sir, the Odas are here. Ah, bring them in, the Raikage said. As they were already inside, the chairs were there for them as the both of them were told to sit down as they did. It's a pleasure to meet you, Raikage-sama. The girl said with a proper nod, as she was showing much respect. Yes, a pleasure, the guy said. The Raikage had a smile on his face. It's a pleasure to meet you both as well. Arashi Oda, if I'm not mistaken, he said, looking towards Guy. As the guy nodded, and Sahara Oda, he said, looking towards Girl, as she gave him a generous smile. So I've gotten all the information while you're here about your businesses to deal with, the trading routes. However, you're not the only one on this market. You and many others have recently heard that Kumo trade route suppliers are in need of a new ambassador. And you're not the first to ask to take part in this. So let me ask you this to the Raikage. Why should I allow you to be the one to take over this project? As he was facing the girl, Sahara. Well, for one thing, a man with your stature, I'm sure that you did your background studies on us. Of course, the Raikage said. And I'm sure what you found was rather pleasant. Yes. But that doesn't mean that I will accept anyone so easily. Well, that is right. That is why we choose Kumo in the first place, as you know that you're not the only village that we can outbid in this race and join on with any of the other nations. Yes, that is correct, said the Raikage. But I do have more people asking for this project. This will not only benefit me and my village, but it will also benefit the supplier as well. So if you have other proposal, why don't you go and take them? Well. Out of all the other nations, I must say I like Kumo better, Arashi said. Yes, that's right, Sahara said as she looked around. The environment and the place around here is just calming. Not to mention, while most people is affected by the high altitude pressure because of the mountains, I find it rather soothing. Konoha is not my cup of tea. Neither is a stone. Or, the sand as well. The climate there is too awful. And I don't plan on going to Kiri as well. However, Kumo has shown great hospitality since we step in this village. And while most of her citizens do not even know who we are, the people here has been nice. And besides, Arashi said, you do know that when we go into business, it will be quite beneficial for us and you as well, money-wise. But it's up to you to choose who you want to be the benefactor of this program. So, well, that lies in your honor, said Arashi as he looked towards the Raikage. The Raikage leaned back in his chair. Their proposal was good. As the trading route in Kumo, they used to have a benefactor, but due to some troubling effects and, well, untrustworthy people, they end up in a bad situation. That is why the Raikage was pulling together investors. As these listings were sent from the Lightning Daimyo himself, he had done his research about the Odas. They were a small family who get their money from all sorts over the elemental nation as he had found several other companies with their name in the program as these two were the son and daughter of 
their recent deceased father. After their father died, they took over the business and they started to run it 100%. And the both of them has done wonder for their business and grown it greatly. The Raikage saw how the way they made their business rise from something small to something much, much greater. And he didn't see the problem in allowing the benefit of that to enter Kumo as well. Well, I will give you an answer within a day. Why don't you two relax in the village? You say that you enjoyed it here, why not check out some of the sites? Would you mind giving us a guide to the Rashi? I mean we're still new here despite us loving your village. I recently met one of your shinobis. I believe her name is Yujito. She seemed to be a nice one. The right hagin artist gaze at that. You mean you like her? Said Sahara. As the Raikage realized that is what? The boy meant by that as he saw the small blush in his face. Come on, she's nice. And if you hadn't pulled me away, I would have talked to her for some more. Well, he was still young so there was no problem there, the Raikage thought. However, Yujito was one of his elite Kunuichis, one of the strongest Kunuichis within his village. And this could be good a union between her and this Oda. Well, that would be good for the village, economically, and strengthen as well, if they have the backings of the Oda, well their money, that is. As he wondered if he could make something work out of this, well, she's off duty right now, so, I presume she can give you a tour, as the Raikai glanced at the window. Early tomorrow, he said, given that the place is starting to go dark now, if you don't mind. Oh, we don't mind at all, said Sahara. We've already booked the hotel for the night. So, we will leave you be so that you can go over this. As Raikage nodded, the two of them left afterwards as Mabi came in the office. I've done the extern background check, sir, and they've come up clean completely. The other businesses that their name are allied with, I haven't been able to talk to any of the owners because, well, they won't tell us any of their listing or anything regarding their money. But that is just how business are. But their name is 100% in them. And I don't see anything like, well, what are a former trading roots members used to do. And they're the youngest that has come to us so far. But even with their age, they have shown incredible growth in their business. So it's only big to differ to know how much they will grow in the far future. Are you thinking about accepting their proposal, sir? Well, so far they have given me a reason to, and I don't see why I should not, the Raikage said. As he looked towards Mabe, you have something to say about this, he asked. She shrugged, they seem like nice people. Exactly, the Raikage said. Later that night, in the massive hotel suite, the two of them were given two separate rooms, however, as the both of them came in one room. But despite the both of them being in one room, the people that were there or anyone that came to check, they would notice that Sahara was still in her room. Well, that wasn't real Sahara. In the room of Arashi, Sahara was inside. As the both of them looked around, Arashi sweeped the room before he went through Hansine, placing up a barrier seal that made it seem that he was just standing there. And going over a few reports, as no one would be the wiser, Sahara slammed her hand together before. Her body started to shimmer. As it started to shimmer for a long while until. Her appearance changed completely. As she removed the tag off her chest. Arashi did the same thing. As their full appearances show. A grin came on Naruto's face. As Anko on the other hand was. Still shock. You did well. It only took you that short amount of time to know all of this, and you played your part perfectly. Why thank you, Uncle said with a happy smile. I still can't believe I pulled that off back there. And they were none the wiser, and you are right. Fui Jutsu began Jutsu at any time, I mean, they were not even able to tell that something was wrong. But you, she said. How the hell did you even pull all of this together? I mean, how long have you been planning this? Oh, that's right, I did not fill you in on the background, did I? No, she said. Well, you see, Gato works for me. Uncle was shocked, wait. You're telling me that the famous Gato of the shipping company, who is known to worth 
billions work for you yes and all of that money well it's mine how the hell did you pull that off well luck and charming charisma he said that smile huh. as the day go by you keep on surprising me more and more she said but we pulled the first part off and it went off without a hitch so how do we proceed from here I still have all the knowledge of what you told me so there's nothing to worry about there and I know how to play this part very well as Nurderissa had in her cheek after all your assassination and espionage master so I don't have to worry about that uncle I didn't even have a shred of worry upon bringing you up on this wait 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 said uncle how exactly did you allow it seems like I was in the program as well I mean I wasn't even assigned to this thing before a couple months ago as Nurta stepped closer to her I told you this before uncle the moment that I set my eyes on you I knew that I wanted you and I knew that you would be mine what if I had turned you down as Nurta shrugged and she punched him in the shoulder for that but he simply smiled she had to say she was enjoying the little game that you were playing so how far do you intend to take this as Nurta gave her a look well first of all the tools that belong to the stage of the sixth path are here within Kumo and not to mention signing this program with the Raikagi would allow the shipping company of Gato to get even more money and none of that will be traced back to that and while that is all being funneled back to me in the end I still have to make you look legit so we're still gonna work through with that I have no doubt that the Raikage will accept this I've laid a perfect trail for him to see how much businesses have grown since our father as Naruto pointed at her Haido Oda said uncle died from a severe illness that we could not save him from even with all of our money that is why we funneled so much of our cash into building hospitals as well to help people that don't have the proper medical care I guess it just did something to us and we just want to help people as well after all what's the point of having so much money if you can't do anything with it you know the more you talk the more you make me happy what can I say said uncle I study my part rather well as Nurta grin at that well the right Kage will see from the paper trail left behind that everything is working perfectly so he will not second guess anything so I'm sure by tomorrow evening he will be calling us in to accept our proposal and from there we will play our part well allowing everything to go through without a hitch and also the next part is vital as well getting into contact with its two weapons here they are a vital part of my plan as well well you've already made contact with the two tails and she already seemed to be falling for you just by a mere glance as uncle turned her head as Nurta grabbed her chin come on now are you jealous he asks of course not it's just a part of the game is it not of course said Nurta as he grinned so let her think what you want to believe in the end we will be the one coming out on top as Nurta rests both of his hands in her cheek so just remember to keep everything in line and everything will be perfect as uncle grinned at that the next day isn't your sister joining us asked Yujito as she had spoken to the Raikage after he assigned her to this mission a small mission to just escort him around the village as she looked towards Arashi nah she's fine my sister liked to sightsee by herself and besides if there's anything that she doesn't know I'll be the one to inform her and as he scratched his cheek what's wrong she said I must say I was looking forward to spend more time with you you as Yujito turned her gaze well let's go then she said not answering his statement or anything she just moved off as she walked she wondered to herself yes kitten he is flirting with you I mean that wouldn't be a bad thing right kitten he's a strong masculine guy and not to mention from what you heard he is filthy rich so your life can be set not even bothering to worry about missions anymore you know that with me containing you 
That mission is always a priority for me. Said Yujito. Yeah, but sometimes you can just relax, Kitten. I know that. But besides, I'm not after his money. What do you think of me? Some gold digger? Of course not, Kitten Butts. Having that kind of money wouldn't be a bad thing either. Of course not, said Yujito. As she showed him around the place. As they came across the library. The Raikagi did say something about him being into books and artifacts. As people like these always have some strange collections. As she guessed that he was none the different. As he looked over the strange artifacts. Wow. The Sage of the Sixth Path. Given your shinobi knowledge, do you really believe that the Sage of Six Path was a real person or was he created by a myth just to have someone of that magnitude of power to show how far shinobis can go? Well, I believe that he was real, said Yujito. There are some people in this world that can do extraordinary things. I guess me not being a ninja, it seems rather ridiculous to me, but I'm not someone to judge. After all, being able to breathe fire and do all kind of crazy things in this world is not uncommon so I guess I shouldn't be thinking that it's not real. Not to mention you seem quite powerful yourself. A smirk came on her face here and that. Well, I am one of the strongest Kunoichis around here. Really? As she nodded her head. Was that something that you strive for? He asked her. She raised her eyebrow what do you mean? Well. I always strive to take over my father's company and do much good with my father's money because as much as I love my father, it's when he became sick that he started to truly care about people and his family. As she saw this far away look in his eye, when he was young and wealthy, well, he did come by every now and then and teach us a few things about the business, but he was not so much social with us. However, when he started to grow sick, he started to grow more passionate because he started to realize his own morality and I guess he died that way. However, I never wanted that, neither does my sister. We've seen many suffering and hatred in this world because of the situation that we're in. You wouldn't imagine what people would do for money. We've been almost taken and kidnapped when we were younger at least a hundred times just for our family wealth. However. We were always protected by ninjas or someone else. Even till this fair day. I have never really experienced life as a child before. Sorry, he said. I know this might be bumming you out, but no. It's okay, she said. Go on. Really? He said. Yeah, she said. Well, you see, I've never really experienced life as a child before or even a teenager. Right now, I'm 19 years old. Almost moving on to 20. And I can't say that I actually enjoy a lot of things in this life. I just spend most of my time going through business and working. So yeah. However, I don't want to be like my father. I want to help people. I mean, what's the point of having all this money? You can't take it to the grave after all. So it's better to help people. There wasn't anyone to heal my father of his sickness. Because he waited too long and his body was already at its low end when he was finally ready to try and do something about it. And I guess what I'm trying to say I don't want to end up in that situation where I turn into a workaholic and eventually kill myself because of work. But I still want to experience life before I die though. Uh -huh. He's not only rich and wealthy but he's also compassionate, sweet and nice. Kitten, if you let this one slip through your finger. I will never forgive you, say the Nibi. Be quiet, you're just ruining the moment. Come on, I'm just trying to help. Well, um, you see, um, there's a festival happening at the end of the week. And if you, what is it, he said. Well, I was wondering if you don't mind, I can show you around the festival. That is, if you don't mind. I would like that very much, he said. Really? A smile came to your face. Of course. I think a festival would be rather enjoyable. As she was happy at that. Hey, I was wondering though about these artifacts. Are these really the tools that the sage use? I mean, if he's real and all, aren't these supposed to be some kind of powerful tools? 
Oh, yeah, she said. But why would you guys just leave them here? I mean, I'm not questioning your security or anything, but couldn't people just try and steal them? Oh, don't worry. These are not the real tools. They're just copies. The same way you think, the same way we think as well, after all. We couldn't just leave something this priceless right here. Yeah, I guess you're right. Come on, she said. There's a lot more I have to show you. As you still felt happy. The guys in this village had a... Well, they had a theme in them. They wanted to go out with her because of her reputation and what she was. But he did not know anything about her. And yet he still... It seems like he liked her. Or maybe she was just overthinking things. But this was wonderful. And not to mention, he was sweet. And he asked her about herself, but she did not tell him what she was. Although she doubted that he would understand that much. Him not being a ninja and all, but still. It was a good thing for now. Her relishing like she was just a normal anyway girl. Without a huge responsibility on her shoulder. And that was good. As she spent the rest of the day showing him around. As for Sahara, she had made friends within the village. A guy known as Darui. He was one of the top people at the right Kage side. As it was a coincidence that he met. As she had came by one of the bars to just relax. When they met and they started to talk amongst one another. However, he found her presence enlightening. And slowly but surely they became acquaintances. You wouldn't call them friends yet because they just met. However, she was rather nice. He noticed that. And he see nothing wrong with her presence being there. Not to mention him just come back from a mission. He was just here to relax. Several people came over to greet and talk to him. And those people also met her as well. And one of them. As Sahara tilted her head. Um, what did you just say? Oh, don't mind him, said Darwin. B has a special way of talking. As Killer B looked towards Darwin. Stop trying to ruin my style, he said. You know it's the special way I fly like a Killer B. Pretty Miss Lady, rapping. You should know that it's a key. As she simply giggled at that. You talk really funny, however. I like it, she said. It was in that B. Looked at her, well, intensely, as his gaze traveled down towards her chest. Her clothing was a bit on the more revealing side, however, not that much. But she was showing off a bit of cleavage. As Darwin noticed his gaze, as he gave Bea a stern look, for reasons uneven known to him. As she didn't seem to notice though, as Bea averted his gaze. As he must say those things were fine. As he pulled out his notebook and started to write something down. What is he doing now? She asks. Oh, don't mind him, said Darwin. As B was bobbing his head up and down like he was hearing some kind of music. But she simply giggled to herself. Darwin couldn't help it. She just looked so innocent. And so cute. As they spent most of the time just talking. As she was just in the village. As he found out who she was. He remembered the right Kage talking about her and her family as he really hoped that she and her family was the one to take over the little program that was going to go through the air. That would mean she would be around here a lot more because he had to say she was cute as he hoped that she was not seeing anyone. The thought had popped into his mind. Later that night, once again the both of them met up. Things went perfect today, not to mention. I met the right Kagi right hand man and I have to say I can tell that he liked me already. That's wonderful said Naruto. Being that close to the right Kagi he must know a lot. We can use him and not only that I met the famous killer B. He's rather weird because he raps. He doesn't really talk. Rap said Naruto. I did hear that he has an eccentric way of talking. Yeah it's kind of hard to understand but. He was checking out my chest. He seemed to be a closet pervert. Just like Kakashi. Well, Kakashi is more in the open. But still. He didn't seem to mind my presence as well. And none of them suspect a thing. 
they all think that we're civilians. It was then a knock sound off at the door. Nurt went through one handed seals and pressed a hand on her forehead before she was sent to her room. He walked towards the door and opened it up. Ah, Yujito, he said, as he gave her a smile. The right guy you sent me to fetch you and your sister, she said. I presume you want to talk about what is going on. As she shrugged her shoulders, she didn't get the details. Alright, I'll go fetch my sister. As he knocked on the door, Sahara, he called out. It's time. She came out a moment later. Did the right guy call us, she asked. Yeah. Oh, um, sorry we never get to talk long before or even for me to introduce myself. I'm Sahara Oda. Nice to meet you. I'm Yujito. Nice to meet you as well. So you getting along to my baby brother, she asks. Well, he is good company. I have showed him around. I thought you were going to join me on that one as well. Well, I'm a free spirit. I enjoy exploring the place on my own to see where I end up. But it's good that you and my brother spend time together. It seems like he like you. Yujito feels turned red. Come on now, don't blush. Haven't you noticed? Well, um, as Sahara simply chuckled to herself. Oh, it's quite alright, she said. Hey, Arashi, what is taking you? I'm coming, I'm coming, he said as he came back out of the room. Alright, let's go. Moments later, well, I've come to an agreement. And I will accept your proposal. Both of them got up and shook hands with the man. You won't be disappointed in doing this. I hope not to the Raikagi. I'll put my trust in you and this business. For you to make it expand just as you did for the several others that you have taken part into. Well, we will always give it a 110% as we usually do. So how about we sign up some contracts and make this whole thing official? The Raikage nodded, happy to oblige as they went on signing the contracts. Time skip, two weeks later. Two weeks has passed since they made the deal with the village. So far the money has been coming in and the trading routes has been developed and everything was going perfectly. There has been no complaints actually. Business was booming with this new trading routes as the shipment was fast. The right kite and the order started to talk more business as they want to bring a railway from the land of snow. There was a man there known as Dodo as he had taken over the country. He was completely in charge as he was the one that well, he was the one that came forward because it seems like he had known the father of the Otis and he wanted to do business with his children. The right Kage was happy to hear this as the land of snow has some of the most technological advancements that you could ever find in the shinobi world. So he was beyond happy. However, the Otis had to make their way towards the land of snow as they need a guard though. So they were offered a team from Kumo, which insists of Yujito, Karui, Amoi, and Samoy, as they were their guards. The trip took two weeks in total to make their way, because they had to walk at a civilian pace because the Odas were not ninjas like them. However, they got to know each other throughout the trip, and they got along rather well, as the others knew Yujito as well, so they found their company delightful. Not to mention, the two girls were asking Yujito if there was something going on between her and Arashi because the way they were speaking and acting towards one another was quite wonderful. And they were happy to see her interested in someone because she was always focusing on being a Kunobichi and getting stronger. However, the ninjas could not take part in the meeting. Anko was confused on the inside as she was never told about the land of snow coming into anything like this. But Naruto didn't have much time to talk to her because of the sudden atrocious from the land of snow. So she was confused. But she would just play her part as his sister. However, the messed up thing was, how did this man Dodo know their father? However, Naruto seemed rather calm, so she remained calm as well. If he didn't tell her anything, that means he probably know what he's doing, which he always does. Arriving there, they were led in by the snow ninjas, as they were rather respectful and kind towards them, because they had a big meeting with their lord. Dodo had taken away the support of this country from his brother, So Setsu, and he had taken over, and he started to lead said village. As they arrived at the country, they were brought straight towards a man. 
It was a dining hall. Dodo was the only one there as he told his guard to leave. Ah, Dodo. It's been a while. Still a rushy. Ah, a rushy. It has been a while. So how's the business been treating you? Wonderful as always. How about you? Well, I can't complain. Oh, I apologize. As you know, this is my sister. Sahara. Oda. Ah, yes. It's a pleasure to meet you, said Dodo. Um, yes, a pleasure. She looked towards Naruto. Oh, there's no reason to be coy here. You see, as Naruto placed the armor on Dodo's shoulder, Dodo and I are good friends. Extremely good friends. Isn't that right? Of course, Naruto sama. As Uncle heard what he said, Sama, she gave Naruto a questioning look. Well, you see, after taking over Gato's shipping company, I was wondering to myself, which other main source of economical multi-millionaire program can I take over without drawing too much attention to myself? And then I came across a land of snow, an isolated place because of a recent civil war between the people here that were lead by Sosetsu and the ones that fall under Dodo's rule. You see Dodo here slaughter his own brother and force his niece to flee the country. He's quite the wicked cruel man, aren't you Dodo? Of course my lord. However, I had my reasons. Of course you had, said Naruto as he patted Dodo on the shoulder. Right now he works for me, said Naruto with a grin. However the others are completely unaware of this. So we will have to keep this uh, hush hush. So, let's make it formal, shall we? As Naruto extends his hand, the business has gone through, and you will help out Kumo. As Uncle was just stunned, how much Naruto has not told her. Once they were done with this, they will have to sit down and talk all of this over because they need to come on the same page. Although, so far his plans had not interfered with anything because she did not know. But still it was a lot. You're telling me that he was in control of this man she still didn't know what he did to them however he was in control but he had been going away for months upon times so she could beg the differ that he was able to sneak in his country and do what he pleased but now they had a big support still she didn't get what exactly he was doing with kumo yes they would take the artifacts and they would go after the jinjulikis however once they made kumo rich how would that help them as nur to tell her in due time there was something big that he was planning, and he had not told her exactly what it was yet. But she had faith and trust in him, but she would like to know sooner or later though. As both men shook hands, the door opened up. I said I didn't want any disturbance. I am sorry my lord. As one man came in there with pink hair and green eyes as he was wearing the standard snow uniform. It seems we have trespassers in our midst. Ninjas from Kanoha. As Uncle raised the eyebrow at that, Kanoha Ninja, she thought to herself. As Dodo narrowed his gaze towards Neri, his top lieutenant. And it seems, my lord, can we speak in private, he said. As Naruto gave my signal. Yes, sure. As they made their way over, a few minutes later Neri left. It seems like Princess Koyuki has finally returned, and she has the crystal with her. Ah, that machine of yours. So the princess has returned to the fallen land. And the ninjas of Kanoha. Who are they? Neri is not certain, however, one of them is Kekashi Hatake, the famous copy ninja. As Naruto Grin. What are we gonna do, Uncle As? She got closer to him. Well, we are here on official business, not to mention. We have Kumo protection here. For one thing though, we can't allow the princess to take back her throne, no can we Dodo? Of course not, she'll ruin everything. Yes, she would. However, I never thought that it would come so soon. What are you talking about, Uncle said. We have Kumo protection here. I mean, what would happen if the Kanoha ninjas tried to kill me? Or even you? Uncle Ray's iron. Why would they do that? As Nurta gave her a look, well, unexpected things happen every single day. 
and not to mention that would lead with some nasty backlash between the two villages and not to mention the snow as well with their resources and ours who knows how this can play out but for one thing though the princess will not be able to leave this place alive and it seems like I'm gonna have to meet my former sensei I wasn't expecting to meet him so soon though said Naruto with a grin so what's the plan uncle said as Naruto grinned at her all right listen up he says he looked towards Dodo as well this is what we're gonna do a distance away as the ship was making its way towards the land of snow on said ship was Kakashi Hatake Sakura Haruno she had grown a lot of time had passed and she had gotten a lot stronger however her training was not done but this was a mission that she had to embark on the members of team 7 was rather small considering that two of the other members were missing so they had been assisted by another group said group was none other than team 8 Kuruna Yuai Hinata Hayuga Kiba Inazaka and not to mention Shino Burmi as they and the princess were making their way towards the land of snow as how this was gonna turn out is anyone guess because it's over guys new episode coming up soon for you guys to enjoy so what do you know what to do sit back relax and yeah stay tuned to enjoy but I'm off for now see you guys soon peace